The U.S. military is sporting a new ride. The old workhorse, the high-mobility, multi-purpose wheeled vehicle, more commonly known as the Humvee, is showing its age. The Humvee was originally designed to ferry troops around the battlefield in Europe against the Soviet Union, but it saw the most action in the deserts of the Middle East. You know, the Humvee was designed 35 years ago. It certainly served our nation well, but as we saw in Iraq and Afghanistan, it only offers so much protection from roadside threats. Insurgents in Iraq and Afghanistan used improvised explosive devices against American forces as their weapon of choice. In response, military leaders brought in mine-resistant, ambush-protected vehicles, or MRAPs, which could survive IED blasts better than Humvees. But with those wars winding down, the U.S. military began looking to the future. And what they wanted was a vehicle designed to be both survivable and capable of light transport. That's the constant battle with the military. It's do you lose protection and gain mobility? It's a constant thing with that. The joint light tactical vehicle currently produced by Oshkosh Defense was picked to fill this capability. This vehicle was designed from the ground up to provide survivability against threats that no other light vehicle could ever handle. But will this new advanced tactical vehicle be the answer for the future of war fighting? The AM General Humvee, with a V8 engine and a top speed of around 70 miles per hour, is an iconic symbol of American might. The Humvee is an incredible vehicle, uh, but it was really designed to replace, you know, the Jeep and a series of light trucks that the U.S. military was using at the time. After the invasion of Iraq, insurgents began using improvised explosive devices to attack convoys. Because of a lack of armor and a flat hull, the Humvee became a prime target. So early on, guys would literally throw sandbags on the floor of their Humvees, hoping it would absorb some of the blast. These improvised explosive devices, which were the weapon of choice for insurgents in both Iraq and Afghanistan, they'd shoot these Humvees 20 feet up in the air, they'd be ripped in half. In the U.S., the outcry over the lack of armor for these vehicles caused a political backlash over the failure to give troops needed protection. Some Humvees were up-armored, but the basic design of the Humvee, which left it vulnerable to explosives from below, couldn't be fixed. The American public felt like it was moving too slowly. Congress felt like it was moving too slowly at the time, too. And in hindsight, it really was. Uh, but the truth is, it was a bit of a miracle that we were able to get the MRAPs out there and into operation as fast as we did. In the scramble to field these mine-resistant, ambush-protected vehicles, the U.S. military bought several different designs. This included concepts from Bay Systems, Navistar Defense, and Oshkosh Defense, among others. A few examples of MRAPs are the Cougar 6x6, the Max Pro, and the lighter MATV, which were all fielded by the U.S. military. The MRAPs were expensive. Some cost over $1 million per unit, and its many different designs made logistics much more complicated. These trucks saved countless lives of U.S. soldiers, but their weight, expense, and complexity made them less than ideal for frontline military service. The experience in Iraq and Afghanistan resulted in incremental improvements to the MRAP designs. They're specifically designed to be blown up and keep the crew alive inside. They, they're they really high off the ground. They'll have like V-shaped hulls, which would send the explosion out. They're not vehicles that have a lot of versatility to them. They can't navigate tough terrain very well. The Army and Marines wanted a lighter replacement which could handle rough terrain and have better protection than the Humvee. The idea became the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, or JLTV. The JLTV combines the protection of the MRAP, which was so critical in Iraq and Afghanistan, with the agility of a Humvee. I mean, I've driven it. You could be, you know, with the suspension system, you could be drinking a cup of coffee, going over massive bumps and not spill. The Defense Department started a competition in 2011 to find the next major land vehicle for the Army and Marines, and in 2015, after years of testing, the Oshkosh Defense GLTV was chosen among seven other bidders. An initial contract worth $6.7 billion was offered, with the potential for a follow-on contract worth $12.3 billion at the end of 2022. This also means Oshkosh will have to recompete, potentially with companies like GM Defense, who expressed interest in the JLTV contract, when the renewal period occurs in 2022. When we won JLTV in 2015, there were mega companies uh, that, that we had to compete against. So. We, we expect that there'll, there'll be some of that in, in this competition as well. We, in, in 2015, we, we knew we'd have to win it again. We knew, we knew we'd be facing off against the, the normal, traditional tactical wheel vehicle OEMs, and we expected that there would also be a, a, 
another David versus Goliath component to the competition. So I, I would say that, um, you know, we're confident, uh, but we're, we're not overconfident. The JLTV cost per unit was aimed at $250,000 at the program's inception. Since then, the cost for one Oshkosh Defense JLTV has risen to roughly $400,000, depending on the modifications. The venerable Humvee will still be around to complement the new JLTV as a low-cost option. Originally, the Humvee cost a bit over $50,000 per unit. However, new Humvees equipped with new electronics and possibly armor can cost around $200,000 which is still cheaper than the JLTV. Uh, the National Guard uses Humvees to drive into towns responding to uh, civil disturbance or natural disasters, um, or they're used in overseas just as stationary fighting positions. Well, it's important to remember that when you put the Humvee in the environment that it was intended for, it is an incredibly capable platform. I, I've been in Humvees in country and in other countries, and I've seen them do astonishing things. You'll see Humvees dig themselves out of mud pits that you'd think were impossible. Meanwhile, more than 13,000 JLTVs have been delivered to the US and international partners so far, and more are on the way. According to Oshkosh Defense, it has received orders or commitments for the JLTV from eight countries besides the US. The JLTV comes in multiple variants, some are focused on carrying troops, and others are built for special purpose missions, like carrying weapons, or hauling gear like a traditional truck. One big advantage of the JLTV is the electronics and computers used to make the vehicle more capable in high-tech fights. One of the things that excites me the most about the JLTV is a Marine Corps program called the Navy Marine Expeditionary Ship Interdiction System, or Nemesis. Nemesis basically takes a JLTV, straps a missile launcher on top, and makes the whole platform autonomous. I think the JLTV looks like it's probably gonna be a pretty capable platform. It really was built with the idea of combining the best aspects of the Humvee with the best aspects of the MRAP designs to make one vehicle that could survive in a 21st century conflict. The amazing capability of the JLTV combined with a uh, uh, what's really a, a very amazing price for the vehicle, have, have brought uh, just tremendous international acceptance. Uh, there, there's a, a, a wide variety of companies, uh, countries, some of whom asked not to be named right now, but uh, between Slovenia, Montenegro, Lithuania, the United Kingdom, Belgium, uh, Brazil, North Macedonia, um, Middle Eastern countries. All of these countries are in, in, in various stages of either the far military sales process or the direct commercial sales uh, process. The JLTV along with the Humvee will be mainstays of the US military for years to come. But the Army has shown some intention of lowering the amount of JLTVs it intends to procure in order to divert those funds to other priorities, which includes modernizing the Humvee fleet. I'm, I'm always in favor of competition within the defense industrial base. It makes us, you know, healthier. Uh, that being said, I mean, I, I think as uh, the incumbent on the JLTV program, Oshkosh Defense is best positioned for the JLTV recompete. The electric vehicle revolution hasn't gone unnoticed by the Pentagon. The U.S. Army has been exploring battery-powered rechargeable vehicles for years. I mean, if you can take away fueling vehicles, it doesn't sound like a lot, but every, everything you take off a soldier's plate will uh, improve their, their combat readiness. We actually raced a diesel hybrid electric version of our JLTV in the Baja 1000 way back in 2010. I mean, particularly if you're talking about doing distributed ops uh, in denied environments, comes with all sorts of questions about you know, how good is our technology for recharging electric vehicles, things like that. So I'm interested in the technology. I always want to push DOD to be innovating, looking for more efficient, less costly solutions. So it's just not something I think we can take off the shelf right now and put in the field, but it is something we should be experimenting with aggressively.